Oh, and we got Akabeko. Oh man, Pennib Akabeko Bag of Marbles with Ragnarok. Maybe a turn one boss kill, honestly. All I have to do is beat one burning giant head with a pain in my deck with Runic Pyramid. Easy, right? Surely. But I like rare colorless card starts on the Watcher too. Let's cost us all of our money with three shops early on. Oh, I love this act layout. Look at this. Fire, elite, fire, fire, elite, fire, elite, fire. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, great question, Beanie Twitch TV. So, score in Slay the Spire works uh, a little differently than you might expect. And there's a, a couple very arbitrary things that can boost your score quite a bit. One of the biggest sources of score in a Slay the Spire run is fighting elites. Every elite that you defeat gives you a significant number of points, uh, more so than defeating regular enemies. And you'll get additional points if you manage to perfect those elites. A so-called uh, champion bonus at the end of the run. There's a whole bunch of different little score modifiers. We have a command for this. Yes. Yes. Excavation point score has a listing of uh, some of the modifiers. <clears throat> but essentially, there's a whole bunch of di little, little different bonuses you can collect for score, for doing different things. Uh, for example, having a 35 or 35 card deck or larger, having a deck that contains no rare cards, having a deck that contains four more copies of the same card, having a deck that co contains no copies of the same card, having 25 or more relics, having lots of max HP, um, not taking damage during your boss fights, taking a bunch of curses, just to, just to name a few of the many, many different uh, score possibilities. Score modifiers in Slay the Spire. Looks like I'm going to end up going through the shops, so that makes me less interested in losing all of our money. And more interested in gaining 100 bucks. What if Hand of Greed? Master of Strategy. Or draw three. Draw three is pretty good. Last I checked. Alright, I'm gonna go through this shop. Probably a wasted floor, but that's okay. Watcher's got two stances, this Calm stance, blue. When we leave Calm, we gain two energy, but Calm itself does nothing. And Wrath stance, red, given to us by our Eruption card. Causes us to both deal and receive double damage from attacks. So this 8 goes to 16, but our strikes go from 6 to 12. And we get a Floor 1 Tantrum, something I am not going to shy away from, especially not with a Master Strategy of the deck. At one cost, it does damage three times, puts us in Wrath, and puts itself into the draw pile. Pretty good. Our reality is also a very good first floor take, I think, for that smite, but gotta love the tantrum. Gotta. I mean, I don't, th I don't think there's a better time, Skyfish, to take pressure points than on floor one, for what it's worth. Hmm. Empty mod here. We definitely would like some stance control. I think we do. Draw two cards and exit our stance. Not actually Guardian makes me kind of want to protect. They're fighting the Guardian. And we have a master strategy for big card draws, so actually I like protect more than I normally would. Yeah, alright. Don't think protect is a great card most of the time but it'll do just fine here. Attack Potion's great. Our first Elite will be easy with that. And this is the easiest Fear No Evil in the world. If the enemy intends to attack, enter Calm. Getting us out of Wrath and giving us more energy when we go back in.
Oh man, we could have bought Hand Drill if I'd taken the plus gold start. Sad. Very, very sad. Bought the Hand Drill. Uh, I would have bought maybe the Cut Through Fate of the Carve here. Not a great store overall. Free upgrade. Followed by... No. Maybe. I want more block vigilance or protector, both plus four or block upgrades. This is pretty good. I think we'll upgrade the damage on the Fear No Evil. And then from here we can start thinking about um, upgrading master strategy. Some other stuff. You can even think about avoiding fires. Evil is very tricky for them. Exactly a good wake up turn. Perfect. Have both Furno Evil and Vigilance in the drop pile. It's possible we don't get either of them. We live in the event that we don't. And I think this is Vigilance, Miracle, Protect. We full block. Go back into... Lamb's Dance. I might actually get to save this potion. So Tantrum will do four, and then we have four energy remaining. We can play Eruption, Strike, and Fear Mabel. We do four plus... Fourteen is eighteen, plus eight is... Twenty-six? Yeah, that's a kill without using the potion. Good. Very easy fight overall. We've got all of our health left, almost. And the Blood Vial will heal us two hit points per fight. As well, we're offered a study for some card draw. Just lucky for a little bit of scry and block or weave, returning to the hand. Scry. Weave is no useful, yes. Study is an interesting card. I like the upgraded version of this at one cost. It's, it's reasonable. Kind of slow card draw, but once you get going, it's good, and I like it a lot with Tantrum in particular. Hmm. But it's slow, though. Just Lucky's a lot faster. Doing a little bit here and now. I'll take it Just Lucky. Ooh, and Vajra gives us a point of strength. Now we're headed in the right direction. Good. Might end up taking combat over fire? That seems ridiculous. Yeah, Steady and Snekoi are not, uh, not exactly friends, unfortunately. It's true. I could evaluate? Hmm. Not opposed to an evaluate plus. And block shuffle and insight. 
Although I think I'd just rather upgrade the Protect. Just a little chaos, that, that's for sure. Simply elect not to wrath, or I can use a potion. I should just use a potion. We don't have Sacred Park. This is only 12 tall enemies. Still better than the other options. Attack synergies. Pennib here. Every tenth attack says do double damage, and I'm totally down for a third eye, giving us some scry in this deck. As well as being a good source of block and a great upgrade for scry five. One of my favorite, favorite commons. Four double windmills. Also really good with this distilled chaos. Scry 5 or deal 14? I think the Scry 5 is the more valuable effect here. Letting me discard any stinky block cards I might not want to draw next turn. Hear that, stinky block cards? Better, but not good. Feels like we're gonna... Liquid Memories here. We're just a little chaos here. We don't have a kill. Now we do. Mango giving us 14 max HP. Nice. A lot of HP. Ooh, and Halt is pretty good block here. Although our block game is uh, decent already with Third Eye Protect. Feels like a little bit more damage and or card draw might be the thing to, to add to this deck. And a wheel kick definitely delivers there. All right, Guardian. You are dead. Probably. The wheel kick's also a good pendant target. Versus Wallop. Generally speaking, I prefer the Wallop, but Wheel Kick does have the higher damage and, of course, the card draw. To really give it an edge, too. Generally speaking, I prefer the one that's offered to me. They're both great. It's 
probably better to take a little bit of damage on this turn to keep the Protect in hand for next turn. That seems a little passive, though. Deliberately not transforming there. Impenib tantrum here. Choices, choices. Ragnarok hits a bunch of times. Very good with the Vajra in particular, I think. We've got the block game. Look at all these upgraded cards from Act 1, by the way. Sweet deck. Yeah, the form takes a long time to pay off. Good with we uh, Snekawai, maybe. Although, so is the Ragnarok. Establishment only ever pays off at least uh, at most two energy with his Protect, although that could change if we find more Retain. I'll take a Ragnarok here. Vajra, and notably with Pennib Ragnarok, is especially deadly. No Snekos or Pyramids today. But we are offered some crazy, crazy cards. Relics, rather. Philo Stone. Gives all enemies one strength in exchange for giving us more energy. Pandora's Box transforms all strikes and defends. That's eight random cards. Count them, eight. Or Astrolabe is three random cards, but they're upgraded. Do you imagine that Pandora's is slightly better than Astrolabe on average? A lot of good things that we can get in the Panda Box. We could say with Blood Vials that we, yeah, we go for Bites. That's an option. And we, like, Astrolabe 3 defends. That's a bold choice. They'll just take the, uh, box here. What do we get? Blasphemy Vault, the Wombo Combo. Overall, this is an insanely good set of cards. Vault is, of course, great. It works really well with Wave of the Hand. Foresight is per turn Scry. The Flurry works with everything. The Cut Through Fate works with everything. Yeah, that's a good set of cards. That's a really good set of cards. The only thing we need now is energy. What point does Astrolabe become better than Pandora's? Hard... You know, that'll be a case-by-case -case basis. Kind of weighing one transform at the same as one upgrade. So my, my thought there was that uh, the three transform and upgrades of Astrolabe is quote-unquote roughly equivalent to... Um, six regular transforms, but since we're getting eight, it's better. <clears throat> now, that said, the specifics are always, uh, where the details are very relevant. You know, how good are your strikes with Vajra, Pennib? Do you have any egg relics that could upgrade stuff? That sort of question. But that's where I drew the evaluation line this time. Let's see here. What's our pathing look like? Uh, this deck definitely wants some upgrades. We want to make Blasphemy Retain. We want to make Vault cheaper. We want to... Mostly do those two things. Apparently. And like... Like one of these two elites. Like this elite. Maybe go here, but probably not. Gotta upgrade uh, Ragnarok, too. That's right. We have a lot of important things to do. Kills. Mm -hmm. 
That, uh, the string blue and that clip killick penguin came from... Lesson learned. Upgrading it over and over again. Pretty good stuff. Let's see, Sanctity in, is block and draw. I like that quite a bit. Second Prostrate's interesting. Second Flurry... Not without... Talk to the hands. Sanctity. It was a combat. Good fight. Second Tantrum versus Upgraded Consecrate, hitting all enemies for 9 damage. That's a really good AoE source. This deck needs some cheap cards right now, so I'm going to take the Consecrate over the Second Tantrum. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think this might work out in my favor. Turns of vulnerable. Yeah. Spreading cards to save plus on them. Uh oh. Ooh. It'd be good to still chaos. Yes. Very good to still chaos. Hey, Krogzar. Foresight Vault next turn. And with this much stance switching in the deck, we're offered a Mental Fortress Plus, giving us six block whenever we change stance. Fits perfectly, right? We're doing tons of stance switching. Want more block activations with Leave of the Hand? Good lord, yes. Deck is stacked. And then, the merchant offering the membership card. Don't mind if I do. That lets me buy an attack potion for this upcoming elite. I think I'll take a card removal. Not interested in any of these cards, unfortunately. But I am interested in... I'll be removing Eruption at this point. Tantrum's good. Other removals that are tempting include... None of this? Apparently none of this. Leave the attack potion for this. Or wait, I'm not going to this fight, am I? I'm not. Yeah, and I, can, I do sometimes upgrade Eruption in Act 1. It's either upgrade or remove for me, usually. I'll remove it if I find a better Wrath card, which we did on Floor 1 this run. Uh, 
energy potion to fear no evil. It's a miracle to fear no evil. Give that. Um. I'll trust it. Mega Marble is making our turn one a little spicier. Establishment is back. How is our retain now? Retain Sands of Time. We're going to retain Blasphemy. Retain Protect. All right. Welcome to the deck. Yes, Establishment and Sands of Time stack, so if you have Establishment in play, Sands of Time gets cheaper by two each turn. In 27 times five. Should kill them all, right? Cards will pass. This way. Play three attacks in one turn to gain strength? Heck yes. Watcher's really good with the Shuriken, and this deck is no exception, with Consecrate and what have you. The Blasphemy Ragnarok play right now. Leave the leader on. Minus. Three, and then this will do. 11 times 4.5. We're like super close here. Perfect. Oh, and we got Akabeko. Oh man, Pennib Akabeko Bag of Marbles with Ragnarok is gonna lead to maybe a turn one boss kill, honestly. I'm not even kidding. We could kill Collector on turn one now. Need a couple upgrades, starting with Ragnarok itself. Curse, no. Turn one is too important. It's here. Zap. That. Um, is it possible for me to get Pendib to 9? That's the really important question. Looks like that's a no, unfortunately. Wait. 
Yes, it is, actually. I just have to play Just Lucky two times. Easy. And I'm going to totally take damage to make that happen, too. He's looking decent here. I'd rather have a meditate as our next uh, commentary, though. A little greedy to hold on for that, but I'm going to do it. Ray could be a decent as well. Untrigain. Pendulum applies after Akabeko. The bonus damage does, in fact, get doubled. So, for example, Wheel Kick here is 87 damage with no other modifiers. Try that turn one again. Um... Did we do it? <laughs> I think we did it! Wait. <laughs> Good stuff. So how about a runic pyramid? Pretty spicy. Oh, this deck already retains a little bit. Uh, being able to retain everything is good. Rick Dome or Busted Crown of the other options is actually not the worst crown deck. A little more energy goes a long way here. Runic Pyramid, unfortunately, does not count as retained for establishment. But we still get to discount things that normally retain, like the Protect and the Blasphemy. There's not a whole lot of chaff in this deck, so it's not like the retain is even that important. Really more about the stance switching back and forth, which is easier with a pyramid. Okay, yeah, it's easier with the pyramid. It's always easier with a pyramid. Always, that's what I've decided. Like, our energy is actually just stance switching, which means Runic Pyramid's the best energy relic. All right, good talk. Gotta go for that Burning Elite, and we might even get uh, one, two, three, four Elites this act. Potentially. Right. Yes, Halt Plus is exceptionally good block. We're looking for zero energy cards. Another thing that's very good with Pyramid. Um, Wallop's not bad either, for the record. But it doesn't say plus on it, so... Or have to cut through fate, wow.
And flurry is good. Maybe an empty body? Again, prefer meditate. Six plus eight, fourteen. So we can go. Very cool. Leave a hand there. Whoops. It's even better. Here's a bit of a problem, but not too much, so. So note how the Blasphemy discounted and the Sands of Time discounted there. Vigilance, then blast me, then kill. That looks like the right play. Don't need a sash whip now that we have the uh, wave of the hand plus. Closing thoughts on Legend of Keeper is a little slow paced, but quite enjoyable. Free McDura, there's a lot of. A lot of fun little strategies you can employ, and I, I really found it um, a good time to defend my dungeon against those invading heroes over and over again. I played another run with the Enchantress uh, after stream yesterday, and I enjoyed that quite a bit. It's definitely set an incentive to return to check out the, uh, the third engineer character, see how different they are. Tongs. I'm going to card every turn for... I get to remove this card almost immediately. Let's go with the Warp Tongs here. Upgrade a random card in our hand. All I have to do is beat one Burning Giant Head with a pain in my deck with Runic Pyramid. Easy, right? Surely. Surely that's easy. Where'd this bonus vault come? Oh, right. I took another vault, didn't I? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. I did that. That was me. I did that. I mean, we might even be able to scry away the um, thingy. The pain. There's Blasphemy. What do you think? Can we beat Giant Head before the pain gets into our hand? Not sure we're gonna get there. No decks for this prostrate. Yeah, that was without Pendim too. We could have done that for a thousand damage instead. Think of the possibilities. By the way, I'm rich now, and we have a Gurya. I guess gain strong dude at rest sites up to three times. Well, actually, up to one time, realistically. So that's probably not worth buying. Uh 
Hard removal is good. Max HP is good. I might even buy 12 max HP here. Any consideration for violence? You should know that I am a man of peace. Which chat? Though, our draw is pretty good out here. Definitely take the delicious channel icon, the waffle, the gloriousness. Swap out one potion for fruit juice and the ancient pot so that we have uh, vulnerable blocked against hearts, which we're going to need because we don't block against heart very well. Do that actually. Who's the battle? I did remember to move the pain, right? It's a good job, me. Hooray! Played the crush joints, but it's all good. Eighty eight damage. I've actually been able to kill Reptomancer here if I'd thought this through a bit more. It's all good. Seven times six, that'll do it. All right, good fight. Almost at full water. It's a grid. The other vault in the violence, good stuff. Take the blue key here over the horn cleat, which would be really good as a uh, defensive relic against heart. Oh well. Times that's how it goes. If we don't play any attacks on our turn, gain an additional energy on the next turn. Very, very good for keeping this deck alive. Or fueled with energy through the remaining few fights on full three base energy here. Especially with these vaults. Of course, just vault. Take another turn. Get Art of War value. Easy. Mental Fortress will make blocking a lot easier.
While we have vaults. Get to it. Need to be a liquid memory is that bad. Good memories for the uh, three new builds. Hey, Tajunka. Yeah, I'm thrilled with uh, thrilled with the new overlay and stuff. At the moment, reception's been pretty pretty good overall. Will seem like they like it. Very exciting. Org, etc. Turn. So, uh, wave forward at that. Eighteen plus twelve, that's one million. Yeah, the Fusion Hammer Lighter did die, Panda Stakes. We lost on Ascension 19 to our Act 3 boss. So close to the end yet so far. Or rather to the heart of our Act 3 boss. Not exactly ideal burner or pendant setup, but...
Let's see, so two times six. So had I had I lined up Pendiv, this this would be lethal. Not though. It's all dependent upon what violence draws for me, it looks like. Because this is still going to be 66 times 6, right? It's 396 damage. That should be plenty. Ixacon, thank you so much for the very, very generous 10 gift sub bomb. Welcome on in, everybody, to the council. Turns out violence wasn't the answer after all. Magic. Okay, we can one gains two points of strength every time we play a non or uh, every time we play a power card. Be a bit of an obstacle here, I'm sure. end up playing the establishment in this fight. Don't have a lot of exits, unfortunately. Can't imagine why. Our intangible next turn, that's really good news. the hand, then... Try to eye the pen nib carefully here. I want to end this with one big... Divinity Rag, I assume. With Incense Burner on 4 and Pendiv on 9, perfect. Alright, this will be 45 times 6. 270.
GG. I think our boss victory, victory music has decided it doesn't want to play today. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all these turn one kills. Now here's where we find out that in Incense Burner is actually supposed to be on three because I have Vault. Finally, a talk to the hand. Demaru is here. Why not full screen? Streaming reasons, basically. I got lots of other stuff on my monitors that I need to be able to see. Ori lets us choose and add five cards to the deck. More violence? Let's see what the Ori contains. Omniscience. Another Mental Fortress. Tantrum Plus, number two. So I'm cool to buy a third monitor. I think I'm good with my two 4K monitors right now. They do, they do, they do well by me. Yeah, three energy omniscience, right. Huh. No meditates, notably. I don't want any of that. Bad truth. We want the talk to the hands. It's like Duke Pot. Maybe Power Potion for like Deviform? This is a gaming chair? No, this is a big old recliner chair. Got it at a uh, furniture store like a decade ago. It's out of production now. Another exit might be nice. Yes, actually, yes. We should take at least one exit card here. Of the empty body. <laughs> That's right, Merle. How's it going? Got it. Sure, I'll take a stinky tomorrow. Oh. A dupe. Dupe establishment. Dupe talk to the hands pretty good. Damaru plus Devotion. We got a Devotion, right? It. It's pretty good, actually. I'm sold. Especially with two Mental Fortresses. And that's then the dupe, is the, uh, the, the Devotion gets duped. Cool. Call it a day. No, I'm not a dev. Uh, I'm not a cop. Or a dev. So yeah, here we end up vaulting, so this uh, incense burner isn't even on the correct number. Got Ragnarok, so it don't matter. Easy game, easy life. Question mark. Turn to you to arrend the enemies six times. Or I could go Tantrum first. Then Ragnarok. He's on top of the deck anyway. Wheel Kick will do good damage. Even needs Ragnarok, I mean, really.
think so, right? We're good to kill now. Vega Prep's great. Gambler's Brew is actually pretty good too. Second copy of Foresight's very good for heart. Uh, I think the potions are actually a bit better though. I'm gonna go double devotion, which I am. Onwards. Good. We'll be intangible on the uh, large attack. Good. No good. Penib Akabeko targets, unfortunately. That's fine. Just how it is sometimes. Miracle to get these powers in play. Means we take a full 30, but that's fine. That's exactly what max HP is for. Max HP on Watcher is exclusively for surviving turn three of heart. Of course I can tell. It's the only thing it does. Um, can't really do any more damage. We'll just keep all this in hand. Five mantra per turn and we can just double up on that by vaulting. So, life is good here. Life is very good. Like so. Enjoy some weakness, Brox, Mr. Hart. so I could scry. I bungled it. Curses. That again. Those are fine. Mm, I'll just take the hit. I 
Venom. And as it could always end, wait a minute. With a properly tuned incense burner, I can always decide to go blasphemy before I kill the heart, huh? About an improperly timed incense burner. Blasphemy? Bolt! Whee! Nothing bad could ever happen to me, right? Hey, hey everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. That's all for now.